morning and welcome this morning to Arlington Community Church where we are called by God to be stewards of creation and to build a just society. Welcome to you wherever this video finds you, whether you're watching by yourself uh, with a bowl of Cheerios on your lap, whether you're with your family or your spouse or your partner. What we believe and what we know to be true is that whether we're rich or poor, whether we're gay or straight, whether we're younger or older, we are all beloved children of God and it feels so good to come together. This is the third week that we have offered virtual worship. I'm getting a little bit more used to it. I hope you are as well, just getting a little more comfortable, um, really feeling the presence of God speaking to us. And I want to invite us now to just picture someone that you are used to seeing when you come to church on a Sunday morning, someone who makes your face light up for whatever reason. Let's just call them to mind as we remember that we are all gathered here together. And now I want to invite us into the practice of naming our gratitudes for this week. Again, it's been a week of uncertainty, of following the news and figuring out how we can best protect ourselves. But in the midst of that, there are so many examples of God's beauty and grace. And so we'll take a moment now to name those things that we're feeling especially grateful for. I was part of an email thread this week where a bunch of different members and friends from Arlington Community Church were checking in on each other and someone out of the blue offered to get uh, someone else groceries and it was just, just a small example of the way that we're caring for each other. And so that's my gratitude to be part of a congregation that is not just focused on protecting ourselves but thinking outside of our own situations as well. I wanna lead us now in our Lenten body prayer. Maybe this will be familiar to you all by now. We'll just do it twice together. This prayer accompanies four phrases from a prayer of St. Francis. And so we start by extending our arms out and we say together, make me a channel of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me bring your love. Where there's injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Now I invite you to join me as we do this prayer just once without any words at all. Amen. Thanks to Reverend Barry Kammer for that choreography. I've been thinking about which poems are speaking to me during this time, and I thought I'd share one with us today in worship. We're living in this paradox in so many ways right now, and for me, one of the biggest, um, biggest ways I experience that paradox is whenever I get to go for a walk or a run outside and I see all um, the trees and people's gardens just breaking into blossom. And it brought to mind this poem by the British poet Philip Larkin. And it talks about the sort of mixed feelings we can have during a spring, which like ours is, is filled with such abundant new life, but also um, is complicated by what's going on in the world and the, the constant tallying of lives lost due to the coronavirus. And I think this is a poem that for me brings all of that um, into conversation. It's a short poem in just four stanzas. It's called The Trees. The trees are coming into leaf like something almost being said. The recent buds relax and spread. Their greenness is a kind of grief. Is it that they are born again and we grow old? 
No, they die too. Their yearly trick of looking new is written down in rings of grain. Yet still the unresting castles thresh in full-grown thickness every May. Last year is dead, they seem to say. Begin afresh, afresh, afresh. You can find those words and other reflections on the theme of renewal in this upcoming week's Lenten devotional, which is available through the Parish Scope and on our website.
I would like to share a passage from Scripture with you now. It comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it's the beginning of the second chapter of that letter. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 12. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord through the glory of God the Father. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. My short reflection today is called, Where is God in the Coronavirus? I was a sophomore in high school in September of 2001. On the morning of September 11th, I was in French class. I remember my teacher looking up suddenly at the door. There was an older kid sort of hovering by the door awkwardly. Our school didn't have a PA system, so he had been sent to walk around to all the classrooms and tell, tell everyone that we would be gathering in the auditorium in 10 minutes. As we took our seats in the auditorium, word was already spreading about what had happened. And we sat there as our principal on the spot tried to put some words together to try to begin to make some meaning out of what was already so overwhelming and senseless. I don't remember any of those words. But I do remember what my soccer coach said that afternoon. We were all putting on our cleats and shin guards by the field, and before we started practice, he spoke what many of us were thinking already. Why would we play games at a time like this? He said, what's the point? I don't think he even tried to answer his own question, but the question itself was what mattered, for he named the futility that we were all feeling. Of course, there was no good reason to run around a field and work on our first touches and practice our corner kicks. And yet for that hour, what else could we do but go about our routines? I've been thinking about my coach's question this week. I've been thinking about it as I've tried to keep up with emails and the small tasks of my job. I've thought about it as I've watched children hurtle down the sidewalk in their plastic wagons pursued by their moms or their dads, totally innocent joy on their faces. I've thought about it as I've talked with some of you about some of the small triumphs and little defeats of daily life this week, recovering from back pain, struggling with Zoom on your computer. We all have to keep going. And yet we do so with a nagging question in the back of our minds. Do our actions matter right now? What good can we do in such a time? And whenever we reach a point where we ask ourselves those questions, whenever we get that close to the bone of existence, it can help to remind ourselves who our God is and the particular way he lived in the world. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. These words come from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul wrote this letter from prison and you might know this passage that I read here, it's not actually Paul's original words. He's quoting. He's quoting from a, a song, a hymn, that some of the earliest followers of Jesus wrote. 
They wrote it to remind themselves what we're, tr what we're needing to remember right now. In Jesus, they remind us God emptied himself. In Jesus, they remind us God gave himself away. In Jesus, they remind us God knew what it was to suffer, to feel abandoned. Which means that in everything the world is going through right now, God is involved. God is suffering with us. After September 11th, it was natural to ask the question, where is God in this tragedy? And these days it is natural to be wondering, where is God in the coronavirus pandemic? And we know better than to identify God with an illness. We know the spread of this virus is an awful accident due to bad luck and poor planning. But we also know that God is not impassively, impassively sitting back and watching right now. We know her love is in the emergency room with the doctors and nurses. We know her love is in the food pantries and homeless shelters. We know her love is with the over three million people who registered for unemployment this week, who are worried about their health insurance. And we know God's love is in the uncrowded streets and sidewalks as people pass by, giving each other enough space. We know God's love is with the children drawing their chalk drawings on the sidewalks, playing their necessary games. And so we go about our days and if need be, we face suffering full on. For we know there is nowhere, nowhere in our existence that God has not reached out and touched. Hallelujah. Praise God. Friends, would you join with me, please, as we take a deep breath, as we gently close our eyes and we adopt an attitude of prayer. Most holy, nurturing, and comforting God, we call upon you this morning. God, we pray that your love might rest with all those who have had their lives changed in the past weeks and months. We pray today, God, for parents who are suddenly homeschool teachers, we pray for older folks who are suddenly isolated and not able to see their kids or grandkids. We pray, God, for doctors and nurses in the ERs and the ICUs, feeling overwhelmed beyond what we can understand. May you give them a sense of your presence. May you help them receive the materials and the protective equipment that they need to do their jobs. God, we pray for children and teenagers whose routines have been suspended, who are looking at the world in a whole new way right now. We pray, God, for all those people out on the street, still in need of services that may have been cut short. We pray, God, for all those who are sick with the coronavirus, clinging to life in ICUs. We pray, God, for all those who are waiting to be tested for themselves and their loved ones. And finally, God, we pray for ourselves. May you help us keep ourselves and each other safe to take the necessary precautions to do what we need to do to get through this time. And now we raise our voices together saying the Lord's Prayer that your son Jesus taught his followers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, knowing that you are out there, that we are all connected in this way, 
is such a lift to my spirit and such a necessary thing for us to do together in this time. Stick around through the end of the video. There's going to be some messages of encouragement from our beloved friends in the ACC community. There's also a little blooper we're going to put on at the end of a snippet from our first ever choir rehearsal over Zoom. You'll definitely want to stick around and, and watch what happens when 10 people try to sing together. When you do need to go, however, may you go surrounded by the love and protection of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May you go remembering to be patient with yourself and with those who are around you. May you go remembering that we are all interconnected, all one body of God. May God bless you and keep you. We'll see you soon. Amen. Hi, friends. I haven't ever done this before, so here's a selfie movie. I wanted you to see my beautiful garden just to give you a little bit of peace and beauty. And maybe you can hear the birds. Happy Sunday. Greetings from Tom and Chaco. You won't see camera shy Chaco in this video, but you will hear her playing flute in the background. We are well under the circumstances. She is able to work from home, which is great, and has only had to go into the city once in the past couple of weeks for some necessary paperwork. We have a simple message for everyone. Keep calm and carry on. If you're not familiar with that phrase, just Google it, and I think you'll see why it's very appropriate for this difficult time. We are missing our ACC family and hope things return to normal, whatever that may be, in the not too distant future. Greetings to everyone and stay safe.
Sorry, Helen. Sorry, Helen. You look like you're going to fall on the floor. I'm just laughing so hard because so I was funny. Watching, I was watching her hands, and we were nowhere near she one of No, no we were with her hands. We were standing no, with her I, hands, I, but the I had sound the didn't follow the hands. No, yeah. I was following her hands, and we weren't following her hands. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> But nice poker, poker, nice poker face, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a fun experience, but it's you know it's not can, ideal, really. Can you give the tips. The internet has tips for how to do this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> we should you know. It. The best part was Joe. I think if we just taped Joe's part, we just all mouth, we just mouth our words. <laughs>